JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 19th. I am Harald Lamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD. And I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It gained versus the pound, the euro, the kiwi and the Aussie in that order, while it, um, it underperformed uh, against uh, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. Now, the strengthening of the safe havens, yen and franc, combined with uh, some weakness uh, in the commodity in the commodity-linked uh, currencies um, Aussie Kiwi suggests that investors' appetite deteriorated again at some point yesterday or today in Asia. Indeed, shifting our attention to the equity world, we see that major European shares slipped with the selling intensifying during the US session. All three of Wall Street's main indices lost more than 3%, with Nasdaq falling 4.73%. Now, although somewhat softer, risk aversion rolled over into the Asian session today. Now, the sharp slide confirms uh, the view we've been holding for the last few days, when the market was in a recovery mode. Remember, we've been repeatedly noting that this may be a corrective rebound, as the fundamental landscape of the markets, of the markets has not changed yet. But why the recovery was cut short so quickly and why we saw so big declines? It seems that um, inflation concerns return to overshadow the relief from the decline in COVID, COVID cases in China and the prospect of uh, removing uh, related restrictions in the, in the world's uh, second largest economy. And what added a lot of uh, fuel to that may be Target Corp's announcement that quarterly profits halved and that a bigger margin hit later this year is very likely due to rising fuel and uh, freight costs. Now, following the relatively decent retail sales data on Tuesday, this comes to spark fresh concerns with regards to surging inflation affecting consumers in the US, and thus it adds credence to the, to the view that the Fed needs to continue hiking interest rates aggressively in order to bring inflation back down. Remember that when speaking to the Wall Street Journal, Fed Chair Powell said that they are prepared to move more aggressively if needed. For now, market participants are trusting his uh, previous remarks and are pricing in 50 basis points increments for the next couple of meetings, but we believe they will not hesitate to bring back bets of a 75 basis points liftoff in case double hikes are not as effective as initially thought. That's why we stick to our guns that the path of least resistance for the US dollar is to the upside and for equities to the downside. Now, the British pound was the main loser despite UK inflation data revealing a search um, of the headline CPI rate to 9% year over year from 7%. In our view, the reason why the currency did not respond positively to the data is because the market was already anticipating a similar acceleration. The forecast was at 9%. 0.1%. Yes, this means that the Bank of England is very likely to continue lifting interest rates in order to bring that number back down to its 2% target. But due to recession fears, we believe that it seems that, uh, excuse me, but due to recession fears, we believe, and it seems that so does the market, that the path will be slower than previously thought. And most likely, slower than the Fed. So, uh, 
yes, the Bank of England is obviously very likely to continue raising interest rates. We have our inflation accelerating to 9%, but due to recession fears, the process may be slow, may be slower than the Fed. Therefore, we still see the case for some further declines in GDP USD. Now, flying from the UK to Canada, the Luni was the currency that neither gained nor uh, lost to the greenback. It was found virtually unchanged this morning. In our view, this may have been due to two forces offsetting each other. On the one hand, we have deteriorating risk appetite, which is negative for the currency. While on the other hand, we have the Canadian CPIs coming in above estimates. This is positive, as it means the Bank of Canada could continue hiking interest rates at a fast pace, actually taking the second place among the majors uh, uh, behind the Fed in terms of uh, hoggishness. Now, as for today's events, during the Asian session, we already got Australia's employment report for April, with the unemployment rate ticking down to 3.9% from 4% as expected, but then a change in employment uh, revealing that the economy added only 4,000 jobs, a slowdown from March's uh, 17.9 thousand, and a miss of the 30,000 consensus. Now, the slide in the unemployment rate is a positive development, but the employment change figure is not that encouraging. Thus, with a relatively, uh, let's say, not that positive, not, not, that na not that negative report, a neutral report, we don't believe that those numbers have affected much the expectations around the RPA's future course of action. Now, as for the rest of the day, there are not, no top tier indicators uh, on the agenda. Uh, the only one worth mentioning are the minutes from the latest ECB gathering, but usually ECB minutes are not uh, that market moving. Uh, while tomorrow, during the Asian trading uh, Friday, we get Japan's national CPIs for April. However, we don't expect the end traders to pay much attention. They haven't been uh, for I don't know how many months paying attention to Japan's national CPIs. We believe that they will stay focused on developments pointing to how the global landscape is affected. After all, the yen is strengthening nowadays, while the Bank of Japan is the most dovish major central bank. Uh, ma um, excuse me, the most uh, dovish major central bank. So it seems that the yen is attracting safe haven flows due to concerns over uh, the global economic performance. Now, just for the record, there is no forecast for the headline CPI rate, while the core one is expected to rise to 2.1% year over year from 0.8%. Though this is a decent jump uh, to fractionally above uh, the, bank's, uh, the Bank of Japan's target, it is still well below the high numbers of other major economies, and thus we don't expect uh, Bank of Japan policymakers to start thinking, changing their monetary policy after that. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.